Hello, and you're listening to the Ice World Podcast. My name's Nadia Frontier. I'll be taking over the marine biologist position at Rothera Research Station this year, while continuing Rob Taylor's legacy of this podcast. This episode will be brought to you from the James Clark Ross, the British Antarctic Survey's research vessel that has been transporting bass staff and cargo to resupply five of the research bases in Antarctica. I'll be bringing you stories from the James Clark Ross, also known as the JCR, as I have compiled short interviews with many of those on board. This has been a very unique season, with COVID providing a logistical nightmare. Alas, the operations team have done a formidable job in keeping us all safe, starting in the UK with two weeks of quarantine. There was a huge sigh of relief as we learnt that 70 bass staff and crew all tested negative for COVID. Fortunately, no one had to get sent home and our journey could commence with a full house. I'd like to begin with the first milestone, the escape from quarantine. Ali Massey, the Deputy Operations Station Manager. Ali, can you tell us how you feel about 40 people that are just about to board the James Clark Ross? It's a fantastic sunny day here and uh, everyone's unpacking um, and putting their bags on the coaches ready to head off to the James Clark Ross. And it's fantastic to see the smiles on everyone's faces as they get ready for their next adventure. They've done a fantastic job of quarantining me for the last two weeks. And how do you feel these last two weeks have been? What have been your highlights and how have you been able to keep the crew entertained? It's been really fantastic to actually see people very briefly on their way out for their walks. People have really enjoyed some outside time, come rain or shine. Um, we've organised a few quizzes and we've managed to get quite a lot of training done over the Zoom sessions. That's excellent. And do you feel a sense of relief as if your children are fledging the nest? <laughs> it certainly is a relief to get everyone off safe and well. It's fantastic. It feels like a real start to the season and it's been a long time coming. Hannah Leithgo. Polar Operations Deployment Support Manager. She is here today to tell us how these last two weeks have been and all the preparation that has taken to get to this point. It's been really busy. It's been a really different start to the season. It's been really challenging, but also a really exciting process. And for me, it's just been awesome going through and working out how we're going to get everyone south and then getting to this point today where we're getting people onto the bus and they're actually heading off. So that's, yeah, it's been awesome. And what has been your highlight? I think today, for me, is the highlight. Everyone's getting on the bus, which is a great success. Um, Everyone's done really well to get to this point. There's been a massive effort from loads of people, both in Bus Cambridge and from the guys in quarantine. So the ship's crew and all the staff going to the stations. And yeah, today, putting people onto the bus is definitely the highlight for me. The logistics is kind of challenging each season, and this season definitely was more so, but we planned various scenarios we worked through lots of different things we responded as the government guidelines changed and we worked through it i guess the one thing that i was worried about was obviously people getting covid and that was something that we could never account for but yeah like i say everyone did a really good job before coming into quarantine and during quarantine and so far touch wood we're we're okay yeah it's an amazing achievement yeah have an amazing time katie rum will be the station chef and neil mcleod will be katie how have these two weeks been for you and how do you feel about finally leaving this quarantine period these last two weeks have been really nice i've really enjoyed it actually nice and relaxing got lots of reading done lots of writing done i've been quite busy but really enjoyed the rest but really can't wait to get going this morning and have you been preparing lots of recipes? How have you been occupying your time? I've got four recipe books that I've written. So wow, I've been good. very busy and researching what everyone likes and doesn't like and how to combine things for people with allergies. So, yeah. And on the ship, will you be cooking for us? Yeah, I've been asked whether I'd like to cook at various times. I mean, we've got lots of other training to do. So medical training, I'm part of that. So I'll be doing some cooking, but I don't know how much. I've started to come to realise that uh, dating TV isn't exactly my thing, but uh, I'm glad to be leaving <laughs> finally. And uh, the hotel we've put up to is actually lovely. Finally, glad to get away from it and see what life's like on the boat and see. I uh, can't wish for anything better. Have you been on such a long voyage before on a boat? We'll be spending eight weeks at sea. The most thing I've done is two weeks and uh, a week. 30 foot yacht. This is definitely an experience. Can't wait to see what's all about like environments, what people are going to turn out like on this thing. And what are you most excited about on the JCR? How do you think you'll occupy your time? Definitely this fundraiser we're doing, stuff with against too. And see how everyone copes together as a team doing this and just to do something that's actually really well worth doing while we're on the JCR. Yes, because the team will be racing the JCR and we've all got a whole host of activities and we're going to try and beat the boat on its journey to Antarctica. 
So Neil, you'll be part of that. What activity will you be doing? I like the idea of rowing it. I like the idea of actually being able to roll faster than a JCR. It's pretty funny to say that some people can start cycling the bus go easy on myself and work my way into it. Well, I'll let you get on the bus. So Joe, how have these last two weeks been for you during the quarantine? Absolutely fine. It's been sitting in a room and watching a few Zoom meetings, so you can't really complain. Room service keeps off. What's been your highlight? I've been getting to know quite a few people over Zoom, so it's been nice to actually put face names and stuff and get to know what everyone's doing and just having a laugh with people. And now we can finally all meet now each other, can, yeah. so that is really exciting. Now we can actually see each other in person. Yeah, and Ed, what about you? What have you been doing in these last two weeks? I've been uh, learning photographic post-production. That's been the main thing. So all the, all the kind of nerdy, boring stuff that I've never bothered to sit down and do, I've finally kind of done, or at least started on. And then starting my running career, you know, because running, yeah. <laughs> it was a little painful and awkward to start, but now I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. I think on the boat, it's going to be great. I'm quite surprised as the field guide that you're not already a runner, actually. But what are your main activities? We're going up mountains and now we can do it at a steady pace. You don't have to like run around, you know. Yeah, base jumping wise, <laughs> you're only running if you're running from the police. So there's never, there's never a need to be running. Never need to be running. <laughs> Joe, have you been running through these forest uh, tracks? We've been really lucky to be in such a nice property and have quite a large surrounding perimeter to exercise in and stay sane. Done a run every day. Um, did to the world's most boring 10k, which involved 22 lengths of the driveway. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you choose the driveway and not take the really nice path that we've got? Uh, because I'm not the most stable person and a little bit top heavy and it was really slippy. <laughs> <laughs> and it is really slippy because we've all been running so the path has definitely disintegrated over time. So tarmac 10k in the run, 22 lengths of the driveway, absolutely thrilling. <laughs> <laughs> and what are you, Ed, most looking forward to on the JCR? How do you think you'll occupy these next eight weeks? <laughs> I've got a whole kit bag full of books. Wow. And then I've got like a sort of back library hard drive of all my photos. So I think I'm going to be cataloging them. It's going to be an amazing uh, opportunity to do something I've never bothered to do before. That sounds great. And Joe, what about you? I suppose we're going to have to see how many laps of the top deck is 10k to begin with. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then I've got a nice new French teacher called Nadia. So guys, how do you feel about seeing the JCR? This is beyond excitement for me. Like The JCR, the great British research ships that we get to spend eight weeks on one of its final transits down to Antarctica is just, I'm lost for words really. It's the biggest ship I've ever been on, and it, yeah, it's going to be pretty incredible. So how do you think you'll occupy your time? Ah, so I'll be out looking for marine mammals for sure, just running around the ship. We plan on racing the ship down to South Georgia, so that's going to be super fun. We're going to have to put in a lot of hard work, a lot of hours in the gym to beat the ship down, but yeah, yeah, I'm looking, I'll be pretty active. Yeah, Definitely. I'm pretty much the Are same. I'm going to be, I'm pretty much going to be cycling every day, and then looking at. Marine life with you two. Thanks guys. And now let's get on the ship. Mark, how do you feel about seeing the JCR for the first time? So I have the misfortune of I get horrifically seasick. I am excited by the boat, but I'm not excited by the next two weeks of crossing the Bay of Biscay. Doing a lot of laying down and being very green. Do you think you're going to hold out for these eight weeks and what are your survival techniques? Eat a lot of ginger. <laughs> <laughs> Have you got Take a, a resourceful of supply of ginger? Not as much as I probably should, but uh, yeah, we'll see. I'm hoping it's just going to be the first week or two and I'll get my sea legs and I'll be alright. But um, you never know, do you? So. Peter Hill, boating officer of Rothera Research Station. How do you feel about this epic journey that you're about to embark on for eight weeks, crossing the whole of the Atlantic and then going into the Southern Ocean? What are your initial feelings? I have absolutely no idea what it's going to be like. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but you have some experience of working on boats. It's not completely new territory and you do work at sea. So compared to most, you're probably in quite a different position. Yeah, maybe. I've spent two months on an icebreaker before. But yeah, it's kind of different not having a specific job to do on this one. So mm. I'm a little bit worried about feeling like a bit of a spare part. Well, how do you think you will spend your time? Have you got any plans? I'm hoping that I can find some nice little jobs to do. Like, um, 
I don't know, painting bits of rust or something. Oh, that's me. There we go. So Peter Hill has just been called onto the boat. So yeah. Pete, have um, a good journey onto the JCR and enjoy your first you. steps on board for your home for the next see, eight weeks. See you there. Yeah. Excitement certainly mounted as we all clambered on board the JCR. Everybody was desperate to see their cabins and to find out who they'd be sharing with. We unpacked our belongings and had our first lunch in close proximity. It felt like a completely new world. We have all just arrived onto the James Clark Ross and settled in to our cabins. Pete and John, you're both in a double berth. How do you feel? Can you describe your room to me? Oh, we've just got here from two weeks in quarantine. So compared to having the one room by ourselves, big double bed, it's a bit of a change, but I'm sure Peter and I will be close friends by the end of the, uh, <laughs> the two months sailing down through the Atlantic. Uh, it's cosy, but it looks through it really comfy. And so I think we'll be settling in quite nicely, just unpacking all the stuff we need from now until uh, the tropics and then down to the Antarctic. So a lot of uh, different changes of clothes. We've got a great view out of Harwich at the moment, but yeah, it's nice to have a bit of daylight and see what's going on. There's more than enough room, I'm sure. We have plenty of other rooms. It's nice to be able to be outside one room as well. So compared to those two weeks in quarantine stuck in one room, being able to explore the rest of the ship and see other people there. The is all brilliant. The ropes have been released. It's 9.33 and we're setting sail. It's three minutes late, huh? <laughs> they are three minutes late. So you're going to Bird Island, aren't you? So you'll be on the JCR for four weeks. Are you full of excitement? Oh, uh, I'm lost for words. <laughs> I'm absolutely lost for words now, dear. <laughs> so did you wake up early this morning and see the sunrise? It was yeah. a beautiful morning. Yeah, I was sat having a coffee in the bar. I'll see the sunrise. Yeah, sun coming up. Good, good setup. The ropes are uncoiling. We are actually moving after being stationary for about 20 hours since we arrived at 12 o'clock yesterday. I've been stationary for the last two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> so, Andy, is this your first time on the JCR? Yes, it is, yeah. It's your first season going to Antarctica. How do you feel? And how do you feel about this epic journey going south? It's exciting. I was very anxious before, but being aboard now, it brings it back up and the excitement's there. A little bit nervous because I'm, I know how much work I have to do when I get there, but it's amazing. Very unique opportunity to have to actually be able to go to Antarctica. Not as long as you guys are, but still. So essentially, it's going to take you eight weeks to get there, and then you've got eight weeks on station, so you've got to cram in all that work in the time that it would take to get our, there. Our season's a lot more condensed as a result. I've got less stuff to do now than I would if it was a normal season, and whereas Luke and Connor the two people that are working for me, they'll have more to do. So it's, our season yeah. plans change as a result of the fact that I'm only there for eight weeks. And then next year when we come back, I'll be there for the four or five months and it will be a lot more advanced, a lot more intimate. Okay. And Alex, you're also going just for this summer. It's nice to be going back down. We were on the JCR coming north from Rotherham to the Falklands last season. But it's nice to just be getting back to work, even though it's two months away, we've got an exciting season planned and hopefully we'll be able to make the most out of it once we're done there. And what do you hope to do this year that you weren't able to do last year? Maybe get around uh, the wreck area a little bit more, get more into cross-country skiing. The weather's good enough. The uh, ramp got shut off last year because the snow just wasn't good enough, so we got a little bit more restricted at the end of the season. It'd be nice to get out and actually uh, explore the local area a little bit more. And do you think the novelty is still there, going back a second time? Not so much. I think once you've been down before, you realise that it's another job to do. Whilst it's incredible and it's a great job to be doing, you are going there to work. And it's good to keep that in mind, especially when the season's so short this year, that whilst we're there, we've really got to be working. Here with me on deck is Luke McDane and Connor Richardson. We're overlooking Harwich. How are you feeling? I've never really been on a ship like this, so it's going to be quite exciting. Probably a little bit nervous and excited. Do you get seasick? We'll find out. And have you been on these kind of ships before, or is this your first experience? First experience. I've only ever been on fishing boats, like small fishing boats and dinghies. What are you most looking forward to on board, Luke? Wildlife, rough seas. Going across the equator was pretty cool. How do you both feel about leaving your families? I'm all right with it, to be honest. It's been a long time coming. I've wanted to do this since I was 13. So the fact that lockdowns come in is just really good timing. So, Dr. Rachel Varnum, <laughs> we're standing on board this sunny deck at 9.20 in the morning, and it's a beautiful day, morning. Wearing. You've got sun cream. Yeah, I'm you're ginger. ginger. Yeah, you're going to burn quite easily, aren't you? <laughs> so, Rachel, yes. you're the station doctor. So what does this mean? I see that you've got your own cushy room. How's that going for you? Uh, cushy room's a strong word. Essentially, it's the room next to the hospital. So when there's someone sick in there, it means I can't sleep because I'll be hearing them all night. <laughs> Are you expecting people to be sick in the hospital? No, I've made it very very clear that people need to stay well so I can spend as little time being a doctor as possible and I can spend my time on board learning how to look at penguins and seals and birds and in the engine room. <laughs> okay so what skills do you hope to acquire? You've Six got months. 
a six month journey. So can you explain to me how this is going to work? We will be living on the ship, so I'm a ship's crew, so we stay on the ship for six months, but I'll have to go and help the Rotherer doctor unload all their stuff, sort out their kit. We'll do a bit of an inventory check, maybe a bit of training, that kind of stuff, and then we get off. And it'll be more interesting when we get to the places that don't have a doctor, so Signy and Bird Island, because we have to do more intensive first aid for them, check their drugs and all that sort of stuff, and make sure they're medically happy with what they're doing. It's more interesting at the stations that don't have doctors. Really interesting. And you this... just train up a penguin on the hull. And then give them like a, a little green cross. <laughs> <laughs> have you been on a boat for six months being a doctor, or have you been a doctor at sea before? It's your first time. No, so I do a fair amount of sailing, so I've done some offshore yacht racing as doctor but not on a ship so hopefully this will feel a bit more stable so normally when you're sailing you're about 45 degrees so you're trying to do medical stuff or cook or sail at 45 degrees so it'd be nice to be flat uh and what the facilities like compared to what you're used to here on the ship yeah actually we'll do that we'll have a tour of the hospital stay tuned You've been on the boat already for a week because you, you've yeah. been with the crew during quarantine, haven't you? Yeah, correct. We've been unpacking boxes, checking kit, making sure things work because once we've left, there's no real way to get stuff to us other than air, freight, really, which should be quite tricky. So making sure everything works, plugging everything in, turning it on and making sure the connectors are there. So, yeah, so it's been a busy week, actually. And then you guys rock up and it's really noisy. <laughs> well, I think we were quite tame in the bar last night, actually, uh, I would say. I don't think you guys but... realise how intimidating you are. <laughs> Really? Yeah. So for the last week, there's been about 20, 25 of us on the ship. So we sort of all sit around and everyone's very quiet and nice and chatty. And then last night, there's 80 of you guys and you're like, bah, 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 bah. And I walked in and I was like, right, I'm going to go make new friends. And I was like, or I'll just sit with my old friends. <laughs> but there's just such a buzz, of course, coming out of quarantine for two yeah. weeks. Yeah, just oh, can't absolutely. contain the excitement. And that was us a week ago. So I totally get that feeling. You just want to talk to people. And, and then... Rachel, will you have an assistant whilst you're on the boat? So I'm lucky because Clara, the Rotherer Doctor, will be here for the first month and we will be taking home the Rotherer Doctor. So I'll have a doctor for two months other than myself. Apart from that, no, so flying solo. So there are three people that we train up on the ship as medical assistants. They've got a few more ninja skills than a first aider, so they can put drips in and all that sort of stuff. So we train them up. Oh, that's the field guides and Katie, the chef as well. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So we have got the second cook and two of the stewards and they're our medical team. So if the proverbial hits the fan, they come along and we, we guide them through. Can you tell me what weather we're expecting as we go across the Bay of Biscay? You're the meteorologist at Rotherham. I am indeed. It looks pretty good as we head in towards the Bay of Biscay. High pressure building back across us so hopefully more days like this nice calm settled light winds and a bit of sunshine so that'd be perfect i think not just for the next couple of days but for the whole thing but i don't know if we're going to get it all the way down excellent so fingers crossed that we're not going to be smelling vomit in the first 24 hours at least well this is my first long trip so i can't promise that we're not going to be a bit seasick but Hopefully not. Hopefully it's going to be a nice, a gentle start to us crossing. You've been on the JCR before, haven't you? This isn't your first time being on the boat. You've had a short, fleeting experience. Uh, only a very fleeting experience. I normally just come on for dinner. So that's, uh, that's pretty much my experience on the JCR. It's very nice so far. Brilliant uh, catering. But yeah, no, um, my first trip has been just for dinner. This is uh, my actual first and only time. Normally when the ship comes in, you get a chance to pop on board with a bit of a tour. And uh, as we finish unloading, Cop on for dinner as well, so it was quite nice just to go and see what the, uh, what the boat's like. How do you feel about not seeing land for the next eight weeks? I know, eight weeks is an awfully long time. It's going to be interesting, I think. It's been a, a long time since I've not stood on firm land. I've been on the ice for a bit, but uh, actually, yeah, being at sea and being out in the open, I'm really looking forward to it. And will you be counting the clouds? Because today it's just blue skies this morning. Maybe there's a few low clouds in the distance. Do you plan to be doing meteorological observations as we set sail? Hopefully I can do something useful while I'm on the boat, but definitely it's, um, it's hard not to look at the clouds. A nice misty murky start first thing this morning, but it should be a good one. Lots of different things to look at. So I go through the equator, through the tropics, nice clouds there, nice convection. So yeah, plenty to look at as we go down. Perfect weather forecasting. Thank you very much. The JCR is leaving the Harwich Channel. I'm here with Robbie, who will be the electrician at Rothera. Robbie, is this your first time on a boat? Uh, first time ever, first time on a ship. How does that feel, knowing you'll be on here for the next eight weeks? It's a bit of a culture shock, but uh, nervous, but excited to just start the journey, start the expedition. Do you get seasick at all? I don't know yet, let's find out. <laughs> Have you done any water-based sports at all during your younger years living in Scotland? No, I never. I was on one cruise ship, well, not a cruise ship, a wee touring boat up north of Scotland for probably about an hour. And that was it. So the longest you've been at sea is an hour? Yeah. And then just to be sort of sailing boats on holiday, but not to this extreme. Having exposure to the ocean, is that quite rare for you? Yeah, just uh, just going to be day trips to the beach, but uh, not, a, not a sea person at all. This is definitely going to be a big adventure for you. Uh, yeah, it's going to be quite emotional. Just uh, take a wee moment there, I'm on family and that. So I'm uh, just going to be thinking about them and 
thinking about the challenges ahead. They're rooting for me. They basically said, you need to do it. It's going to be uh, the best thing I've ever done. So bringing their name to Antarctica is going to be a big thing and uh, hopefully make them proud. As I'm sure you can start to gauge, this is an incredibly unique experience for many people sailing across the open ocean for eight weeks without making landfall stands in absolutely stark contrast to a short kayak trip or a little dinghy ride now we are prepared to cross the atlantic and into the southern ocean day one the sun is setting and it's a beautiful light there's an orange glow over the boat people are doing yoga everyone's chilling got their hats on bit of a breeze brian what have you seen today you just described the scene so well there, Nadia. It's been a really good first day. We've seen about a dozen seals. I think we're up to about 25, 30 porpoises and maybe some common dolphins too. So it's really exciting at the moment. We're seeing pods of two or three porpoises come through every couple of minutes, which is really cool. All heading north, all heading in the same direction. We've got some really cool cameras with 600 mil zoom. It looks like there's juveniles that are popping their head up above the water. We're both quite surprised to see such a diversity of life and abundance so far in such a busy shipping lane. Yeah, absolutely. The southeast coast of the UK is a harbour porpoise SAC, Special Area of Conservation. But to see this many is quite amazing, really. I never expected to see so many porpoises. They're usually quite solitary animals, so to see up to 30 come through in the, in the space of an hour and a half. It's really promising for the numbers in the population around in the UK. Definitely a good sign when there's so much negative news around marine conservation and marine life. Everyone on board's getting really excited. How are you collecting this data, Ryan? We're using a app called Cyber Tracker that we've designed to record the data that we want. So every time we or anyone gets a sighting, we update the app to take in the data such as the number of individuals, the distance from the vessel, the weather, the environmental conditions, and it also records the GPS location. So we know exactly where and when we see the animal. As so eloquently explained there by my colleague, that's exactly what we did every single waking day on the JCR. We were on the Monkey Island, the highest point of the ship, and we had binoculars literally glued to our face to look out for dolphins and whales and to record every single sighting we saw. By the time we had made landfall at Rothera, we had recorded 236 different sightings. The aim of this data is to share it globally with a range of organisations that monitor marine mammals and that track the movements of different individuals. And we hope that the way in which we conducted this survey will be repeatable on future long voyages at sea. And that brings us to the end of the first episode of the Ice World podcast. I must say that is a rather eclectic mix of different interviews and I have to apologise for the quality of the sound. As a first podcast... To be honest, I didn't know exactly what I was doing and I realised on post-production there was a lot of clipping coupled with the fact that I was outside and in the wind. Nevertheless, I hope you gained an insight into what it was like leaving the UK in November 2020, last year, amidst the start of a second lockdown. So this is really an episode dedicated to how people got to Antarctica during a pandemic. Stay tuned for part two.